It was a hard luck year for the Indianapolis 500. The auto racing classic had to be postponed on Monday after a major collision on the very first lap. Today, the race was restarted, but within an hour, there was another major pileup. ABC's Jim McKay describes what happened. Here is Savage's car, owned by Andy Granatelli, out of shape already as it comes out of turn four. And watch now as it takes a hard left turn. Watch also as it nears the wall, and you will see the rear wing, which exerts 1,600 pounds of downforce on the back of the car, depart from the car. It leaves the car. The car is totally out of control. The rear of it lifting from the ground. It hit, hits this wall just about head on, as you see, well, you see what happens there. Unbelievably, at this hour, we are told that Driver Savage emerged not only alive, but conscious from this crash. He was taken to the track hospital, since then has been airlifted by helicopter to Methodist Hospital here in Indianapolis. This, of course, is a very early report. It is the way we have it now that Savage is alive and is conscious. No report whatsoever on what his injuries might be. There was a subsidiary accident, subsidiary in the sense that it was derived from the crash there. A fire truck racing to the scene hit a mechanic in the pits. His name, Armando Tarrant of Culver City, California. No report on his condition, but he was thrown about 50 feet when a fire truck hit him. If this race is completed, ABC Sports will have a two-hour program on the jinxed 1973 Indianapolis 500 starting at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. That's all we have for right now. Jim McKay, ABC Sports, Speedway, Indiana. According to late reports, pit crew worker Armando Tehran died as a result of his injuries in the accident, and driver Swede Savage is reported in critical but stable condition. Following the accident, the 500 race was resumed.